Richard Branson has achieved a lifelong dream after a successful flight to the edge of space. The billionaire businessman hopes the voyage is the beginning of a new age of space tourism. As Floyd Cush reports, fellow billionaire Jeff Bezos is right behind Branson with a similar launch planned in just over a week. Gliding in for a smooth landing at New Mexico's Spaceport America, Richard Branson's lifelong ambition is fulfilled. The first billionaire to make it into orbit all smiles post-touchdown. And that honestly nothing could prepare you for uh, the view of Earth from space. Um, I mean, it, oh, the whole thing, it was just magical. Virgin Galactic's successful mission on Sunday took 17 years to pull off. When Branson founded the company in 2004, he thought he'd have space tourists in the air in a few years, but he insists it was worth the wait. The mission statement that I wrote inside my spacesuit was to uh, turn the dream of space travel into a reality for uh, my grandchildren, for your grandchildren, uh, and for many people who are alive today, for everybody. Um, and having flown to space, I can see even more clearly how Virgin Galactic is the space line for Earth. His flight began in a carrier plane which ascended more than 15 kilometres above Earth. A rocket-powered space plane then detached and climbed to an altitude of 80 kilometres, or the edge of space. But this was no joyride. Branson says it was a test of the space tourism experience he wants to sell. Many people have already bought tickets and um, with this test flight having uh, succeeded, um, I'm guessing that ne next year they will be sending tourists into space. Branson won't have a monopoly. Fellow billionaire Jeff Bezos is hot on his heels with the launch of his company Blue Origins commercial rocket expected in just over a week. Around 600 people have already paid deposits for tickets on Virgin's space plane. It will cost them up to $250,000. But if Branson's experience of a lifetime is anything to go by, it could be worth every penny. Floyd Cush, TRT World. For more on this, let's speak to former Goldman Sachs executive director and future space tourist Per Wimmer. He's also a founding astronaut with Virgin Galactic and he joins us now from Milan. Great to have you back on the program, Per. Firstly, what's your reaction to the successful maiden voyage of the Virgin Galactic spacecraft? I'm emotionally touched. I'm so happy for Richard. I know how dear to his heart uh, Virgin Galactic is to him. He's got 450 companies, but Galactic has got to be one of one of the ones closest to his heart. And this is a lifelong dream that, that he wanted to do, going to space and coming back safely, and therefore paving the path for the rest of us as founding, founding astronauts to go to space soon. That's right. And to make yourself a founding astronaut, you actually paid $200,000 for a Virgin Galactic ticket some 15 years ago, which is actually a bit of a discount now that uh, prices are at around $250,000 for a, a ticket. But I'm wondering, have you been told when you might actually be going into space now that this maiden voyage has taken place? I think it's realistic we'll, we get to go next year uh, at, at some point, hopefully in the early part of next year. Uh, no doubt the uh, Virgin Galactic team will be busy preparing for things during the autumn and then we get to go. There was two main milestones I was waiting for. One was to, for Virgin Galactic to get its commercial license. It got that a couple of weeks ago. And then for astronaut number 001 to take his flight, Richard Branson. He did that successfully yesterday. So the path is now cleared and uh, I'm ready to put my suit on. I've got it all uh, ready and uh, set to go to head up for the runway and hopefully head into space. It's going to be a trip of a lifetime. It's going to be magical, like Richard is saying. Uh, I can't wait to go. Uh, and yes, it's been a long journey already. We've had setbacks along the way. Uh, and for me personally, I bought my first ticket to space uh, 21 years ago. So you can imagine patience uh, is, is a good thing and virtue in space. But now it's finally happening and I am so excited. That's right. And it's, it's worth noting that you actually bought your first space ticket, as you say, some two decades ago on uh, the space adventure firm that, uh, that didn't end up taking off the ground. So now you're on 
uh, the Virgin uh, Galactic uh, rocket ship, uh, if you like. But after the success of this maiden voyage, it is easy to forget that in 2014, uh, a pilot was tragically killed during a Virgin Galactic spaceflight. Do you believe that safety will still be an issue going forward, given that uh, this venture is very much a, a new thing? Safety has always been paramount within Virgin Galactic. It will continue to be so, uh, not only to protect the astronauts going up, but also it's a regulatory requirement uh, for people on Earth. You know, we might hit somebody if things go wrong. Um, and also commercially, it, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, if, if we have an accident, then uh, it's, it's good, it's bad for the business. So for all those reasons, uh, safety has got to be paramount. And no doubt Richard wouldn't jump on the flight yesterday if he felt it was unsafe. There's been so much, so much checking uh, done. I know some of the engineers personally. I, I know how clever and skillful they are. And the FAA, the regulator, has, has obviously uh, gotten their blue step on it. So, so yes, it, it's safe. Having said all that, uh, it is a risky business going into space. You are effectively sitting on a big rocket that will release a lot of energy, uh, taking you into space at three to five times the speed of sound. Uh, that is a little bit more risky than flying a, a normal Boeing 747, uh, say, London to Istanbul. So um, and we're aware of that. We're conscious about that. But we think the, the reward of going to space certainly justifies taking on a little bit of risk. As I mentioned, a ticket on Virgin Galactic will go, is currently going for $250,000. Will space tourism then be something that's just for the super rich? I think over time you'll see, like in any other private enterprise, more players will come to the market. You'll see a differentiation of the market. Uh, there'll be some low-cost carriers, like we see in, in Europe, Euro, uh, EasyJet and Ryanair, that sort of thing. So there will there'll be some cheaper propositions and certainly lower ticket price than that. And therefore, space will become in the reach of much uh, much more people. But there'll also be a higher end where, where you'll have greater experiences, staying longer, going further, etc. So there'll be a differentiation over time uh, with various experience, going to the International Space Station, maybe going to the moon one day. Who knows, uh, etc. But it's all very exciting, and it's exciting to see private enterprise being involved here. In the past five years, there's been an extra exponential amount of money going into the private uh, space sector, in addition to government money being spent. So that it is really a new dawn, a new era for private space at the moment, and it's so exciting to be a little part of that. It sure is, and all eyes now will be on Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin launch, which is due to uh, take off in about a week's time. But Per Wimmer, until then, thank you so much for joining us again on the program.